What's going on everyone? This is Graver back here, bringing you guys the latest behind the bar reviews for Seven Deadly Sins, chapter 325, on time again this week. That's two for two. Let's see if we can keep this going. So, um, this chapter was, I mean, it was okay. It was okay. Nothing super major happened. Honestly, I'm not a fan of what is likely going to happen in the next chapter, but uh, we'll get that when we get to the end of the review. So, right off the bat here, cover page is wasted once again. Uh, but what we do see is we jump back over to, you know, Leonis and stuff. We see Hauser, you know what I'm saying? Hendrickson and Dreyfus, they went off into other villages to try to clear everybody out, clear everybody out. Seven Dillons are fighting the Demon King. They're just, they're doing damage control pretty much, right? So we jump back to there. It doesn't really add anything to the story, just showing that, yeah, they're still alive. Yeah, they're still evacuating. So things are happening. Now, we jump right over to the Demon King fight. So we're not going to see Zeldris and Gelda in this chapter, which is... I, I mean, that could have been called, it was kind of a 50-50 toss, whether we were going to actually jump back over to the real world halfway through, uh, if we had started this chapter with Zelda and Gelda facing off against the Demon King, but clearly we're going to uh, spend some time in the real world, in the physical world, with the fight of the Seven Deadly Sins versus the Demon King right now, and then probably in a couple of chapters, we'll probably jump back over to Zelda and Gelda. So... That being said, that's a little disappointing, honestly, because this chapter, once again, didn't really have any other hype. I mean, other than Escanor being a boss, as always. Um, pretty much all we really see here is they fight. They fight. The fights are kind of cool, but I have to question a few things. Number one, a lot of people are, are, are upset that Escanor is able to do what he's doing against the Demon King. Now, I've made my, uh, my arguments for why that's potentially possible and stuff a little bit of head cannon you have to use a, you have to stretch a few things a little far but it is at least somewhat viable you know what isn't viable you know what really isn't viable because people are blaming Escanor for the power scaling issues when it's that guy with the weird demon beard looking thing it's it's the ripoff of the crow over here it's the demon king that's caused all the power scaling because yes they're bashing the crap out of him when we see, and don't get me wrong, the fight still looks pretty cool. We got King, Bond, Escanor just going at it, Bond going, oh, no, 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 you know, he might as well be D Dio or Jotaro or one of them, you know, uh, so that's basically what Bond's pulling off here right now, right? And what I'm seeing right now is the Demon King takes, like, he's being pushed back and he's taking the hits. But it doesn't seem to be taking that much damage, as Merlin states later. And then he just hellblaze, you know, just whoosh, boom, it encompasses, doesn't just encompass their body. It's like, it's massive, a massive hellblaze explosion just cycling across like half the lake's worth, all in their direction where they're at the center of it. And then we see the damage that actually did to the Seven Deadly Sins, to King, Bond, and Escanor. Demon King's not very impressive. You guys, like, like that right there should have shown you as to why Escanor is able to do what he's doing right now, because the Demon King can't even take him out with that type of attack. You know, the Demon King should be able to do, remember what Hendrickson did when he first absorbed a Grey Demon to Bond, and just obliterated his body, and just, boom, gone. Or what Escanor did to Gallon in the first shot, boom, just gone. That's what the Demon King should be able to do to most of the combatants here. You know, you can make your arguments for each one as to why it won't work, but scratches? A little bit of blood? Like, perfect cell hit Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, and Gohan's arm was bleeding more than these three are, collectively. Like, it's just, it's not impressive. And one of the worst parts is, is that, yeah, that might have damaged them, and they're just not, like, it, it definitely hurt when you see the, the damage on their bodies. But an attack from the Demon King of this level, absorbing what they say, and is an unlimited supply in the lake. And once again, this is the rougher translation, guys, so the lines might be a little different. But from what we understand here, the lake is still feeding the Demon King's magic. So he's not tiring him. It's not zapping his mana pool, though near infinite is probably what it is anyways. But it's not zapping him of any energy because it's just constantly replenishing, right? Though I have to, that begs the question that the, the lake is not on the Demon King's side. So once again, the original argument from back when Meliodas and Elizabeth first showed up at this lake, 
This implies that the lake should also feed them as well. Or they should be looking to a way to stop the lake. As Merlin should yell at Askinor to cruel sun the whole damn lake and get like get that advantage away from the Demon King. If they can't absorb from this lake and make this a 50-50 battle, like it's an even handicap on both sides, they should be trying to destroy the damn lake. The whole world, as they state this chapter, is being destroyed by tornadoes and storms and fires and blizzards and all this stuff from the mere presence of Demon King and Meliodas for every second they're still here. The world, the whole world, or the whole land of Britannia is being ripped apart by natural disasters. So the argument that uh, I heard before about them saying, oh, well, this is a sacred place, you know, they don't want to actually damage it. Like, right now, does that really matter? Oh, that's great, we want to save this little lake. Meanwhile, the rest of the lakes of the world get blown up, but as long as we save this lake, it's fine. And if we got rid of this lake, it might actually give us an advantage to stop the destruction of the whole world. But no, 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 nature, the environment, you know, tree-hugging, you know, about this lake, or water-hugging in this case. Like, it, there's no argument here. They should either be trying to destroy the lake, or the fact of the matter is the lake should be giving them the same boost it's giving the Demon King. At least that's the way I see it. Um, so, once again, Merlin and her dialogue screwing everything up. Um, so, during this whole encounter, though, uh, so, not only do we see the power scaling issue from the Demon King, once again, who should be able to rip these guys in half, you know, uh, it's not... It's just not happening. Like, it's supposed to be impressive, but honestly, it's not impressive at all. Like, his presence is doing more damage than he is physically doing damage. That's that's the sad thing. Um, and then we see that Merlin uh, drops the perfect cube after Elizabeth says, you got to drop the perfect cube. And clearly, this is what they thought would work, and I suppose it would work. I mean, see, the curse thing now has been twisted on its head a little bit because they've been avoiding these curses somehow like okay this it was supposed to kill elizabeth and it didn't now it's supposed to kill elizabeth again and it didn't merlin even states now this could be a translation thing guys as i said it's a rough one but they could be talking about the fact of the matter is that elizabeth is inside the perfect cube so that the curse can't affect her so it can't try to kill her right now because even if it does even if a random lightning bolt which we see in this chapter or a rock or something happens you know like the rock face falling off again Perfect cube is impenetrable, so it, it, it shouldn't matter. Like, they can protect her through that. But that begs the question, okay, Merlin has known the perfect cube for how many years? And how many years has she known Elizabeth? You're telling me, like, this is the problem once again. You're going to try to justify that if they could just protect Elizabeth with this perfect cube this whole time, you wouldn't think that Meliodas would have... Like, the, the moment Merlin learned this spell, she would have protected her sis-sis with the perfect cube from the curse? Like, from the get-go? Like, you, you tell me they haven't tried that before. If they haven't, they're stupid. And if they have and it didn't work, then there's no reason for them to believe that it's going to work this time. Like, there's no method, there's no reason to have the perfect cube on. Because that's Merlin's whole reasoning. I can't drop the perfect cube. The curse of the Demon King will then reactivate sort of idea. Or it, it can hurt you. It can kill you. She's like, she doesn't matter. She uses Invigorate, which I was about to say, yeah, yeah. Okay, Bloodstained Alley, whatever. Go back to who you really are. That 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 was a typo. I, I'm, I'm going to think of that as some fan-drawn chapter with a typo. You know, or something like that, because it just has zero relevance. You know, bombshell dropped, bombshell didn't go off, bomb just sitting there, and everybody forgot that there's you know a, a nuke from a, a bomb from World War II still sitting there, defused, never worked, didn't blow up. That's that's basically what this whole bloodstained Ellie thing was. But she goes back to doing what she is good at, which is invigorate, and everyone's like, Whoop. you know, and we've seen the power of invigorate. It gave Eskinor's arm back and all this other crazy stuff. You know, from near death. It brought him back, so they're all like, all right, and I'm sitting there like thinking, okay, so all the damage, especially that Escanor just took, like he's been taking quite a few blows from the Demon King, because he's been the tank here, um, and he does an awesome body blow here. Demon King tries to raise his arm, Escanor just rams him, not even with his fist, he takes his whole back and just, boom, right into him, just uses all of those beautiful back muscles and just slam, and like he doesn't tackle him from the front, he just falls down on him from the Friggin' back. It, it, it's pretty it's beastly. It's a beastly shot. Um, 
So once again, the fight's pretty good. But yeah, so Elizabeth drops this, uh, the perfect cube is dropped. She uses Invigorate, and almost right away, the uh, the curse starts to try to do its thing. A whirlpool happens. Merlin can't do anything. Deanne, everybody's in the water. Gother and Gelda. So clearly, so Gelda didn't physically enter the world. Her body is still there. It's still her soul. So that begs the question, can she truly interact? She kind of did interact with Zeldris already, as Kitchen Prime pointed out on our podcast uh, this week. So go check that out on his channel. Um, where we discuss all these manga, uh, but I, I don't know. It's a different method on how she entered into her soul world. I thought that maybe she physically went there, like that's her physical form sort of idea, but clearly it's still her soul and her body is still right now an empty husk similar to what Gother's and Meliodas's was. Now, this all happens, and once again, as I said, just jumping right back to the perfect cube problem, is that if they never tried the perfect cube thing, and found out that it didn't work, then they're stupid, because why wouldn't you have tried that? Over, over these hundreds of, over a hundred different Elizabeths, you wouldn't have tried that? And if they did try it and it failed, because they're not stupid and they would have tried anything, Meliodas has been trying multiple ways, and you don't think Merlin would have tried this by now. If that's the case, then this perfect cube is irrelevant, because they would have tried it, they know it can't protect her, and dropping it or putting her in it is irrelevant to the curse. Like, it shows in this chapter, it seems like, oh, the perfect cube was the thing protecting her. But that's total bullshit for the rem- for the rest of the story and the other 100-plus Elizabeths. So, I-, I, don't, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Once again, Merlin and her... Like, even when Merlin's not actually doing anything do sexy, her dialogue is still retconning a bunch of stuff or making everybody look stupid in their backstories and stuff. The Meliodas Elizabeth curse backstory is a fantastic backstory. The problem is it, in this arc, has been retconned multiple times. Not only was the whole, oh, the Demon King gave Elizabeth her curse and the Supreme Deity gave me my curse. That's why I can't destroy it. That is not true. In one of the Viz translations, I forget which volume, when the curse first happened, I own it. Uh, I read it, and it did say that the Demon King, when, uh, actually, I know what it was, the Viz translation, or it's not actually Viz, it's uh, Kodansha Comics or whatever, the official translation uh, for Seven Deadly Sins, in that volume, when he first goes to Purgatory, um, and he, like, when he first dies against Esther Rosa and Zeldris and that kind of stuff, he says, the curse that you bestowed on me, Demon King, or the curse that you gave me. That's, that's basically, so, right away, that's a retcon. That's that's just well, it's not even a retcon. It's a change. And there was another instance. Um, I forget which chapter, but it was pointed out in Grimm's Discord. Go check that out. So this is the problem with this arc. There's been multiple changes to facts we already know, and what it's doing is it's taking away the solid, the the, the solidified good backstory, and it's po- starting to poke holes in it because they're trying to make things make sense in the current chapters, and that's a problem. So. I, I really don't like this. This was all solid up until this arc, and this arc just keeps stacking on the bullshittery. So um, that's the thing. I, I just, I really didn't like that aspect of this chapter. I didn't like that that little bit of dialogue. The whole lake thing is is just stupid at this point. And the perfect cube stopping the curse. And in this chapter, they make it seem like, oh, the moment the perfect cube dropped, the curse activated and tried to kill her. And then Meliodas shows up, catches her, and uh, full counters a lightning bolt, I guess, towards the Demon King. Not really sure how that works, because if he used full counter, it's more like he deflected it, I guess. But if it's full counter, then, I mean, technically it's the Demon King's curse, but wouldn't it just be a lightning bolt? Wouldn't it go back? Like, had he full counter... Like, and you can't really full counter. It's a natural lightning bolt. Well, it's not natural because it's... See, this is where everything gets all screwed up, and it's just kind of foolish. But either way, he reflects lightning bolt. Meliodas is back, and he's like, all right, I'm back. Seven deadly sins, let's unite sort of idea. Avengers assemble. That's basically what uh, he says here. Um, but yeah, the, this, the, the dialogue and everything in this chapter really... This whole arc, once again, it does have some serious problems. And the rest of the chapter is okay, like, for the most part. But the whole, the lake thing and the perfect cube curse thing, that, that, that's an issue, to me anyways. Now, sorry about the jumping back and forth, back and forth for that part of it, guys. But there was just a lot to talk about. There was a lot of things to say. And I get a little tongue-tied on making all my points in a very con- 
cohesive manner sort of idea, right? I don't have notes in front of me. I don't have the chapter pulled up or anything. So staying on point sometimes, I go off on tangents. But you guys already know that. Uh, that being said, the rest of the chapter. So Meliodas does show up. Everyone has their lines like, hi, you're early. Uh, well, shall we begin? Escanor, just being a boss as always. Even when he says a simple line, it's like, yeah, it's Escanor. It's cool. Um, Meliodas kind of stands there. He's like, all right, let's do this. And he's got Elizabeth. He caught her. Everything's okay. Of course, he's shirtless again because everyone loves Meliodas shirtless. And then he's like, let's show him the power of the seven deadly sins. We see a really nice shot. I'll probably make that my thumbnail, actually. I'll have to probably play around with it a little bit. But we see all the Seven Deadly Sins, and it looks really cool. We see Bon and Escanor and King and stuff. And they, it, it's a pretty nice shot with them all standing on the lake sort of idea, right? Um, now, this is where we see uh, Elizabeth is like, oh, give Gilda to me. I'll take care of her. It's fine sort of idea. And it's like, okay, they're not going right away back into the perfect cube. So what? Does the curse have a, have a, like a, a timer? You know, like a spell, like a respawn time, a cooldown period. Is that what this is? Like the curse, oh, tried and failed to kill you today. So another 24 hours, another 12 hours, another hour. Because clearly nobody's, Merlin's not rushing to perfect cube her ass now. So, yeah, that 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 part's just really annoying. That That's really stupid. Um, but that being said, the other part of the chapter. Now this, this can go bad. This can go real bad. Like, really, really bad, guys. Because Deanne is finally not going to pretend like like she's like, I, too, am a member of the Seven Deadly Sins. I'm always relying on you and the Sins and you, Elizabeth, and blah, blah, blah. And, like, I'm a member, too. So she's like, Merlin, change me back to my regular size. I didn't even notice she wasn't in her regular size. Because that's how irrelevant Deanne is. She has been so irrelevant through almost the entire series. And I didn't even know she wasn't in full giant form. I really didn't. When she said, turn me back to my full size, I'm like, oh, she wasn't? That was literally, I, I did not register it, did not acknowledge it, because it didn't matter whether she was full size or not this entire time. That did not matter. So, I mean, whatever. Uh, that being said, she starts to do the dance of Dole or Bal or whoever. Um, the, you know, the awesome giant, the real giant who would have been a far better member of the Seven Deadly Sins, the four-armed droll, king of the giants. Now, the dance of droll, of course, as we know, like, I might be saying that wrong, guys. It's either droll or doler or, um, or balor or there's a lot of names for him, and I'm terrible at pronunciation. Either way, the giant king. So, she starts doing that, and of course, we know that that raises her power level from, like, a measly, like, I don't know, she's at, like, six, seven thousand, eight thousand. It raises it up. We've seen it go as high as, like, jump to 15, jump to, I think, like, 20-something. That should be completely irrelevant in this battle of a fairy king who's clearly about 200,000, Escanor, who we know is over 100,000 at this point, probably more considering he's using all these one moves, you know, uh, and he might be like, this is an all or nothing, so he might be oozing, you know, he doesn't have Rita, it's not absorbing part of his power, so his power level could be well up to about 200. We know that Bon is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Demon King, still makes no sense, but... Uh, he, so his power level is clearly on the same level. And now she's doing this dance of droll. And it's like, okay. Even the Demon King's like, huh. The giant dance that increases combat power. How annoying. And he, like, how would that annoy you? She could dance for days and it wouldn't matter. She can't increase it infinitely. Otherwise, that would be broken as hell. Why wouldn't she just, why didn't she dance for three days before this fight? When she danced the entire time against the Endora, let Bond take care of it, and then by the time, if, if it's if it's like that, if if there's no like ceiling to reach with the dance, she should have been dancing this entire time, and then she would have been like, all right, now that my power level is a million point five, let's do this, you know. So no, there's clearly a limit. There's a ceiling on this, and there's no way she should be able to do anything with this dance. It should never increase her power. Once again. The Demon King is the problem of the power scaling. It's not Escanor. It's not even Deanne. It's not Merlin. Well, Merlin was a huge problem and all on her own. But the power scaling was the issue with the Sinner, with Miles' dialogue, and the Demon King. That's the power scaling. Those are the ones to blame for power scaling issues in the current, in the current arc, in the series. They're the ones to blame. It's not actually the most, it's not the sins. But here we're seeing Deanne, she's going to do this thing, Demon King attacks her, 
King blocks it, and she's like, yes, Droll, like King of the Giants, give me your power so I may, you know, help my friends. And she's like, dance, 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 everybody. You know, and so she's doing, she dances to some hip-hop music, and I'm surprised she's not creating earthquakes. And um, then she says, Mother of Creation. Now, once again, this is translation, guys, so this is the rough one. I don't believe, I believe this is supposed to be a new move. It's uh, Mother of Creation, uh, Destruction of the Earth, or Creation of the Earth, or something like that. Um, it's, yeah, actually, what is it? What is it? What did they roughly translate that as? They called that uh, Creation of the Earth. Yeah, I had it right. So Mother Creation, Creation of the Earth. Um, that's why I thought I was wrong, because it's Mother Creation, Creation again. So it's Creation, Creation. Um, I believe this is a new spell. It's a new skill uh, that Deanne is using all her power to do, but she's been dancing for 10 seconds. So, I mean, what was the point? Like, I, I don't know. Like, if that dance increases her power to this, like, I'm so worried because I guarantee you this technique, this, this ability she uses is going to actually be able to damage or hurt the Demon King. Now, once again, even if there was no ceiling on the dance of Joel, right? Okay, if there's no ceiling on the dance of Joel, that's fine. It's not fine, but let's say that that was the case. And she was dancing for chapters. Then this would be okay, relatively speaking. But the fact is, she danced for... Her, her power level's below 10k right now. She dances, it gets into the five figures. Not into the six, into the five figure range. I, I don't care if it's 20,000. I don't care if you guys want to argue that it's 85,000. Still below six figures, especially since she's only danced for like 10 seconds now. Get, I'll even go as far as a minute, but she hasn't. She hasn't been dancing for a minute. The moment she started dancing, Demon King attacked, King blocked it, and then five seconds later, she uses this ability. So her power increased worth the 10 seconds worth. That's at most into the 20,000 range. Now she's going to use this crazy mother creation technique. Isn't that actually Droll's magic? Um, that's why she said, Droll, lend me power, grant me strength. Because creation magic is the giant, but he's actually got mother creation magic. Isn't that the case? Or he's got like a different version of it, like earth something magic. Either way, um, mother creation, so it's the ultimate creation magic, nonetheless, whether Droll used it or not, and it's creation of the earth. So some crazy-ass spell. Um, that we never knew about, why she never used it before, we don't know. Uh, we're going to find out what it does next chapter, what its ability is, what it's going to do. I'm assuming it's just some crazy big earthquake, like, crater forms and, like, encompasses him, and then it all goes heavy metal on his ass, and then crushes together, or something. It's just going to be a giant, giant version of something to do with, like, boom and crushing. Uh, so... That's what I think, anyways. I could be wrong, and it still could be a very well-drawn and cool technique. Fact of the matter is, it should not be able to do any damage to the Demon King. She shouldn't really be able to use it if it's going to be that strong. And this whole dancing thing, what was the point if she only danced for 10 seconds? So, yeah. Um, as I said, the chapter overall was okay, but they're trying to make, they're trying to make all the sins relevant. And... They're not, because they're not equal in power. Bon, King, and Escanor are far stronger than Merlin, Gother, and Deanne. That's why they're on the front lines fighting, and the other ones are sitting back as spectators. Because they're the strong ones. These are the weak ones. It happens in all types. The difference is, at the very least, the problem with this right now is, in Dragon Ball Z, they finally let them sit on the sidelines. You know, main characters for a long time, Yamcha, Tien, Krillin and stuff. It came to a point where Goku and Vegeta had to do all the work. You can say that that was bad story writing, whatever you want to say, but at the end of the day, at least Toriyama did not try to continuously make Forgetting Super here for a minute. But in Dragon Ball Z, you didn't see, by, by that point, you didn't really see Piccolo and um, Tien and any of them doing anything to Perfect Cell. You didn't see them doing anything to Majin Buu. You didn't see them do, you, you know, eventually it came to the point that they can't get any stronger. They reached their ceiling. They might have been main characters, but it's it's done. It's done and over now, right? They've had their time. 
that's it. Nakba here is trying to make Deanne and Gother and Merlin and even Eskinor to an extent. By nerfing the Demon King to this point, he's written a terrible power scaling and he's trying to make like all the sins matter when they just don't in this fight. They shouldn't have been the last fight with the Demon King. They shouldn't be mattering now in this fight. The only ones actually able to do anything to this Demon King right now should be Meliodas and the One. That's it. Bon King, none of them should be able to do anything. But they've nerfed the Demon King so bad, though they've hyped him up to be as bad as we think he should be, but he's clearly not showing that he is. They nerfed him so that the other characters could actually stand a chance. So this whole thing, like, as I said, getting off topic here, point of the matter is, chapter was okay for the most part. It's just that the, the little, the dialogue with the perfect cube and curse thing is bullshit. And, and it retcons and ruins some stuff. The lake thing got to go. They got to either stop mentioning it or do something about it. And the Deanne, like, the Deanne thing right now is okay. It's fine. Except for the fact of what is it going to actually do. Like, when I first saw it, I thought that the dance of Droll, maybe she could somehow, maybe she learned an advanced dance or something where she could actually power up the three fighting. What if she uses the dance of Droll to not increase her combat ability, but she used it to increase other people's combat, sacrificing her own, and it makes her vulnerable sort of idea, right? Like, her power level goes down, but they she increases theirs. Like, I, I'd be okay with that. That would be... That would be in line. She's a support. That's fine. Elizabeth right now, forgetting the bloodstained Ellie thing, is a support with invigorating stuff. She's the healer. You know, you have your tanks out front for a reason in RPGs and your DPS. You leave your mages and your healers in the back for a reason. You know, like, this is just... I I, I don't know what Nakaba is thinking here. Clearly, they never played an RPG. Um, but, yeah, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we have some issues, once again, in this chapter, retconning some problems, once again, and, yeah, I mean, well, I'll have to wait and see, I'll withhold judgment for 326, but if that move does anything to the Demon King, then, once again, I don't want to hear a goddamn bad word about Eskinor ever again, because if Deanne can damage the Demon King, Eskinor should have done exactly what he said, and I'll accidentally kill him, so... That being said, ladies and gentlemen, what did you guys think of the chapter? Clearly this is a bit of a rant video. Sorry for that, but I'm I, I'm starting to lose my shit because once again, I love this series. I paid good money for all these volumes, which are the most expensive manga volumes you can buy, honestly. Like Torico, One Piece, Bleach, Food Wars, they are all like $10. These ones are all $15. I have to always wait for a sale, and even when those go on sale, like I can buy One Piece volume for $7, the most popular series in the world. But I can never find these for under eleven dollars. Like that's ridiculous. That's Canadian money, guys. So you know, use your use your conversion. But so as you guys see, I, I'm just I'm angry because once again I'm passionate about the series and I thought we were on to better and brighter things, and you know that the only thing they were going to screw up was continuously screw up the power scanning. But this that perfect cube thing kind of it brought up some old feelings of, really, really? Like, you've already stabbed us through our seven demon hearts. We're already in purgatory, Nakaba. Now, what are, you, what are you trying to do? You know, like, we're already in purgatory. You stabbed our seven demon hearts. You're trying to tell me there's an eighth one there that you're just twisting a knife slowly but surely in? So, either way, what did you guys think of the chapter? What did you think of the review? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please like, subscribe, comment, as always, and hit that bell notification to know every single time I drop a video on your guys' ass. This has been Griever with your Behind the Bar Reviews for Seven Deadly Sins, Chapter 325. I apologize if this sounded a bit like a, a hate video or a rant video and stuff. It wasn't my intention. But as I read the chapter a few times, it just started to boil up. So sorry about that, guys. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. As always, drink responsibly. We'll see you back here next time.